In this video, I'm going to show how you can both save and load custom settings into your Sony Alpha camera. Now I'm going to technically demonstrate this using the Sony a7R5, but this should work really with any Sony Alpha camera made within the past few years that contains a newer menu system, all the way from the a7S III up to the most present models. And I will leave a listing of those models in the video description so you can check that out and confirm if your Sony camera makes the list. And so without further ado, let's get started. So let's assume you've set up your camera in the exact desired way you want it to be. All of the different settings, buttons, dials, switches, everything matches what you would want. At this point, you can save your camera settings so that you have a solid backup of them and can reload them in your camera if you ever needed to. So the first thing I typically like to do is making sure that I have a formatted memory card that is ready to go for this. So I would either switch to a memory card that you haven't used yet, or if you have a card that's been in use, get all those files off of it and then format it from scratch. And of course, to format your memory card, you're going to want to go into the menu option on the camera, go down to the shooting mode, media, and then go over to format, select the slot that the memory card is in, choose that, and then choose enter to perform a quick format. Now, once you have a freshly formatted memory card that you can save your settings on, again, we'll want to go back to the menu here and go down instead this time to the setup option. From here, we will go over to the reset save settings area and then go into save and load settings. Now, in this case, you'll see you have the option to load, save, and delete settings. In this case, we're going to want to save them, of course, to the card. So if I go down to the save option and select that, you'll see that this will allow us to save a new settings file. Now, by default, this is going to set it to a generic name, which is usually camset01. Of course, the problem with this is if you saved all of your settings files with that same generic name, you might have trouble telling them apart if and when you go through the different backups of these. So I usually recommend setting a custom name on them. To do this, of course, I'm just going to hit the select option. And then I'm going to go in and just backspace here all of the different characters. What I like to do is normally say maybe choose my initials, which in this case are going to be AES. And then from here, I normally like entering the camera model just so you know exactly what camera settings these are for. And yes, to navigate around this, I'm mainly just using using the center button and wheel around the rear of the camera. All right, so now that we have our custom name specified, in this case, I can just go down and select OK. We will use the dial again to scroll down to click Save, and we will do just that. Now, once we click OK here, what you're going to see is if we went to Load Settings, the camera would actually see the custom file settings that we just saved, and it would be able to tell us the date and time at which we saved these. So yeah, saving your custom settings in your Sony camera is generally as simple as that. But what if we want to actually load someone else's settings files to use within your camera? This is going to look a little bit different. So let's actually remove our memory card from the camera to talk about something important you're going to need to know when you're loading any custom settings within a Sony Alpha camera. All right, so now going over to my laptop here, as we go through the memory card here to private, Sony, setting, 7RM5, at least for this specific camera, cam set, we will now see the actual settings file that we saved and can use to load our settings onto. This folder path is going to be incredibly important to keep in mind because any settings files you attempt to load into the camera are going to need to live here in order for the camera to be able to recognize them successfully. Now, technically this folder path should be consistent across the many different Sony camera models. Of course, with the one caveat being that specific model designation that will change depending on which camera you're using. Now I will show on screen a few different examples of what this folder path will look like for at least the Sony cameras that I own. But in this case, what I would definitely recommend is not just referring to Sony's documentation, but really if you ever need to determine what this folder path should be. Follow the initial part of this video to just save a settings file to a memory card within your camera, and you will have the exact folder path that you need to load those custom settings onto the camera as well. Okay, so now let's show how to load custom settings on the camera. I'm going to use the main Sony A7R5 settings that I defined in my Sony A7R5 settings video, which I will leave a link to above and in the description below that you can check out. And so to download these settings, let's go over to my website. And so on my website, if we go to YouTube and then the My Settings section, you'll see we have a link to a couple of different custom settings both for the a7R5 and a7 IV. I'm going to download the a7R5 settings. And you'll see I do have a set of instructions on the website that are going to roughly define what I'm showing you here. Now, if I go to my downloads, this is going to show a zip file that contains the settings file that we'll need. If I double click to extract that, you'll see we have the folder here and at least a partial folder structure that will contain the settings file that we'll need. Now, because in this case, our memory card already contains the main folder path that we'll need, we don't need to actually copy over any of the folders here. We can just take the settings file and drop it right in. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this using just Command C here on my Mac. I will hop back over to the memory card and again, just traverse the same folder path we described before so that we get back to our settings file location. And then I will use Command V to paste this in. So now just to go over what we have on the memory card, we have the settings file that we just downloaded. That is from my A7R5 settings video that we're going to attempt to load. And we have the test settings that we saved earlier in the camera to demonstrate that. So now let's put the memory card back into the camera and show how we can load these settings. All right, so now hopping back over to our camera 
right here after we've loaded the memory card into it. You'll see that if we go back to the menu here, we'll want to go back into the setup section, back over to reset save settings where we were, and to save load settings. And this will allow us to load the settings we just put onto our memory card. So here, if we select the load option, you will see we see two different settings files. Of course, the first is the one that we saved as our test here earlier in the video. And then the second one is the one that I mentioned we downloaded from my website that contains all the different custom photo and video settings. So let's load this downloaded settings file onto the camera. In this case, I'll just click the center button here to load these. And you'll see that we will get a warning here that it will overwrite the camera's current settings before it does this and reboot the camera upon loading these. So we will scroll up to hit OK. And we'll let the camera load the settings file and reboot. Now with the camera rebooted here since then, you'll see our exposure is actually slightly different because this is what was set at the time that settings file was originally captured. But more importantly, I can go through the different settings here and confirm that these are exactly as they were defined in that settings file and everything has been able to load successfully. Now, of course, we did note that we have the option to delete settings files as well. So just to demonstrate that quickly, again, if we were to go back into our menu, go over to reset save settings and save load settings, we can go down to the delete option here. And let's say we want to delete the settings file we originally made around the start of the video. In this case, I will just select that, scroll over to OK to confirm deletion, and the camera will confirm it is deleted. Now, of course, if we go to the load screen, you'll see we only have the downloaded settings file that we have to load onto the camera. Now, maybe just one last important point here that I think you'll want to keep in mind when doing anything with custom settings files with Sony cameras. Again, if we go back into our menu here, you'll see that we have, at least at this present point, one settings file on the memory card. But what happens when we format that memory card? If instead we go back and we choose to format the memory card, much as we did at the start of the video, what you're going to now see is that any settings files that were previously on the camera are no longer present. And yes, this includes the settings file we just downloaded and expected to find. So yes, you're going to want to keep backups of these settings files, say on an external hard drive, just so that you don't accidentally overwrite them in the common usage and formatting of your memory cards. So that is a run through of how to save and load custom settings onto your Sony Alpha camera. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of videos around Sony Alpha cameras already on the channel and there are more on the way. So definitely subscribe if you like content around that. For now, that is all I have to say. So thanks for watching.